which will address second, uh, the other side of uh, stem cell, exogenous stem cell, how we can use exogenous from outside the body into the body. So we decided to look again, it has fixed the whole of the HG, which is a spinal cord, and using the stem cells. So again, this is my group, as I say, this is my research member, I'd like to say thank you to them, and who are based in Holland. Um, again, what is the project? This is a new project. Where we don't have a lot of data, and this is a short talk. So, um, uh, what is the problem in the spinal, in the spinal cord engine? The problem in the spinal cord engine is that this spinal cord engine can be called the gene or called the progenia, which is a kind of paralysis. The patient has a paralysis, either in the forehand or both of the enemies, both and hind. And this don't, the problem is don't literally hear like other injuries in the body. So the spinal cord is a problem that they don't literally hear like other types of the body. And the second problem, as I will mention to you, is that we don't have a stem cell therapy so far. So we are trying to address this question. So the spinal cord injury can be to paraphernalia or codopedia, and which constitutes 36% out of the uh, um, uh, of the car accident with 10,000 new spinal cord injuries each year in, in the Australian country. So this is a severe problem and it is related to the car accident. And very little is known about whether injected stem cell can risk with this problem. So this is complicated. We have engine which can't be here by itself and we don't have stem cell. So now, and this, therefore we were interested in this subject. Uh, and this is again, this is a problem now. Then we have epidemic road accident in the world and in Egypt. This is one of our severe problems in Egypt. Road accident is a big problem. So in Egypt, for example, who has 30, 30, 30, 13 deaths per 100,000 uh, every year. And this is account for 7,000 to 10,000 deaths per year for road accident. So we can reach to 10,000 uh, 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 cases of death cause of an accident, which should mostly lead to the uh, uh, spinal cord injury. So they already have several figures, and worldwide we have 1.2 million people die of the road accident each year. And we expect this problem to be deprecated in 2030, so we have 3.6 million people die just from road accident, which mostly cause spinal cord injury. So this is a severe problem in the world. Right? So how can, how can we fix this problem? And we thought about this project. So the issue is that the problem, as I say, we have a spinal cord injury because of the accident, most of the accident, and they don't need to hear. So if you have other body, each other part of the body can literally hear by themselves. But spinal cord injury, this is a problem. They can't reach. So, and very, the second problem is that the is not about whether if we inject the stem cell in the spinal cord, it can be integrated into the spinal cord and differentiate into the nervous cell. So it's complicated. The owner can't be, nature can't, can't be nature by itself. And if we use the stem cell, we don't know whether it can solve our problem or not. Because we don't know if you can get access and differentiate into the nerve in the blood. So our hypothesis is that if we use one type of stem cell called amniotic phenomenon stem cell, and I will describe what, 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 what the amniotic word stem cell. If we use this cell and inject it into the site of injury, is that by the code, this cell will be integrated into the organ and can be differentiated, can, can differentiate into the um, uh, nervous cell and therefore can fix the problem. So, and this is our hypothesis. Uh, Again, what is significant to Egypt? Egypt, what is significant to this kind of productivity? First of all, as I say, we have a big problem in Egypt. We have 10,000 people, 10,000 persons die each year because of road accident, which must cause the problem of spinal cord injury. So it is a severe problem in Egypt. And also, um, this will solve our this problem in Egypt and will improve the economy of Egypt and we can establish stem cell death therapy from this kind of, uh, of uh, injury, which will promote the economy and will introduce Egypt to the big market, which is the stem cell market, which worth 330 million dollars in 2000. And 
it is a big industry. It's not only the health issue, but also also this business. So, again, this is a simple classification for the stem cell based on how to use it. We have exogenous stem cell and endogenous stem cell. My first talk about was about the endogenous stem cell and how can we modify the behavior of endogenous stem cell, which is I talk about. But this is the second talk now about the exogenous one. The one which I introduced by myself into the party. And how can I use this exogenous stem cell for the, like, a neutral stem cell for the treatment of spinal cord injury, or if I use neuronal stem cell for the treatment of craniofacial defect, which is not the subject of my talk. Uh, uh, my talk focuses on a neutral stem cell. And here is some background information about a neutral stem cell. This stem cell. Uh, <coughs> Why we focus on a neutral stem cell in particular? Because anyway? there is some recent suggestion, see that, yes, spinal cord injury can be uh, healed by the infant, but there is some suggestion that, yet yeah, we can, if we can use this kind, some kind of stem cell, we can, we can, it can be fixed. This is the first sign or sign signal which help us to move into this direction. And human and neutral stem are a variable source of stem cell. They don't have any ethical issue. It is a part of the amnion during pregnancy and extracted from the animal during pregnancy. And there is no ethical issue, it is not embryonic stem cell, so there is no problem about using them. And this kind of cell has been proven, has been proven that this kind of cell can be used for the treatment of other diseases, skin and lung and the So So it is well established, it is well established, and we don't have any ethical issue. Like in the United States, we have a big ethical issue in using embryonic stem cell. But this one, we don't have any problem about using it. And this is some data about, uh, uh, some information about a needle for stem cell. It is multiple stem cell of mesenchymal uh, origin and extracted from the amniotic fluid at the age of between 8 and 12 weeks of gestation. And it expresses, it is similar to embryonic stem cell. This is a good thing, you know, they are very similar because it expresses similar gene like 237 uh, uh, gene and they can uh, differentiate into other types of they only organize skin, lung, and kidney. And they have the potential for medical application. And this, when we extract this cell, of course, it is not affect the embryo. We don't have a problem with the embryo. So it is a safe and efficient issue. We don't know about using it at all. And um, it is possible to also to bank them. There are, there are two banks in the world. The first one in the United States, second in the United Kingdom, of this type of steps. Here is some of our data, our and other people data, for using this stem cell for the uh, treatment of some diseases. The hypothesis here, I have two questions for this. I don't have a lot of data because it's a new project, but a lot of description from the method which I'm going to use. So the first hypothesis we have to go. If we can inject this cell into the animal or the human, can we, uh, do we expect them to be located into the spinal cord? Can you migrate and reach the spinal cord and hold the spinal cord itself? No other order this is the first question. And if if so, if it happens and we can be located in the spinal cord after injection, can we differentiate into the cell or not? This is the question I'm addressing in this presentation. So the first hypothesis we address and we would like to test is that. Uh, human amniotic fluid stem cells are efficiently taken up and integrated into the spinal cord after injection. And here is something. We use this stem cell which is available by fluorescent material. And therefore we can see it in the animal. Small animal guides the mice using specific method. So when we injected this stem cell into the intravenous injection into the, the vein of the tail of the animal, we track them. We follow them using the microscope, of, of, uh, specific type of microscope. And what we see here, as you can see here, this is stem cell injected from the tail and now start to migrate after one, one, one day, and we have them after two days, three days, seven days, and different type of them. They have different curves because they depend on the density of intensity. intensity. How much cell you get? This is the, the bright one. The red one is the highest number of cells. The other one is the second one. We have green and we have green. But this is simplifies the existence of this cell. 
So this kind of bioluminescence of mice after thin vein injection with amniotic fluid stem cell, and we find that this intense amniotic fluid stem cell located in spinal cord and also in different other organs, like the lung uh, uh, and the kidney. This is a specific organ and endocrine as well. So they try to perfect this organ. When we inject into the tail, they migrate and recognize to this organ. So this is the first, uh, this is the answer to the first question. Uh, if, if we inject this cell to the tail, do we expect them to recognize to the spinal cord or not? This is the, first, the answer for this first question. So the second question, yes, okay, the organic mouse is spinal cord. Can, can this cell be differentiated into the cell or not? So we run this method in, in fit and outside the body. And yes, we find this cell can be differentiated into stem, uh, into nerve cell. And therefore, uh, therefore, we express marker of this nerve cell, specific marker. Like nesting, for example, the one here, the green one, and also other marker, like the, uh, uh, the uh, using PCR, like uh, two, um, like geriatric acid high 3 phosphatase, this band, and also uh, CIRPG. All the marker of stem cells. When we grow them in the middle, you can differentiate in, in the nerve cell and express the marker of the stem cell, and we we'll group this using different methodology. So we'll get an answer for the second question. Again, okay. this is what we're going to try now. We're going to animal study, and in the future, we'll go to uh, human study. So the animal study, we need to confirm what we are trying to do is that, to confirm that if we inject this stem cell to put the tail into the animal, we expect them to migrate and recognize to the spinal cord. So this is the first approach we are trying to do. So we are isolating this stem cell, injecting them in the, in the animal, and tracking them to recognize them to the spinal cord and other cord. Okay? Yes, yeah, okay, we're fine. Then you look right to the spinal cord. Do we expect them to differentiate into nerve or not? So in this experiment, we will use mouse model of spinal cord, normal mouse model, of course, and we will inject the animal and we will Then we can move to the mouse model of a spinal cord injury. We call this kind of injury in spinal cord and inject this cell to the, the, the brain, the hip brain, and then track them and see if they can rise to the spinal cord or not, and if they can differentiate or not. So this is the second approach of, of, of this study. Of course, if we can get, one, if we are satisfied about the animal study, now we can move to the clinical and we can analyze this to But I know this is not, not a story, and the animal study is a key, and how we establish this kind of uh, way of thinking of science, for jumping to human studies, we need uh, satisfied and uh, not satisfied because much, much more comprehensive evidence that there is a success for it in element because, because of the value of the human study. So our future plan is to move to the human study and do this kind of injection in human who has suffered with this final of injury after car accident or something like this. Um, if I have a chance, of course I don't have this chance now, but if I have a chance to do some of this kind of work in Egypt, here is my plan. So the first step I'm going to introduce and establish this kind of amniotic fluid stem cell uh, therapy in Egypt. And also, I'm, of course, I'm going to carry out more clinical uh, study in, in the patient, of course, after giving them permission. I'm going also to get this kind of uh, uh, authorization from the approval of my study from the Egyptian Authority. And of course, I hope this kind of development of this kind of methodology in Egypt will improve the economy and we will sort out big problem in Egypt, which will cause spinal cord injury because of oral accident. Um, of course, I don't have to say more about the value of this kind of study in Egypt. Of course, we have. 10,000, more than 10,000 people die every year of car accident, mostly because of spinal cord injury. So I'm going to solve this problem. We're going to improve the economy of Egypt for this subject, and we're going to introduce Egypt into the big market, which is the stem cell market, which was worth more than 330 uh, million dollars in 2002. And of course, one of my belief is to establish this kind of stem cell bank. I'm near the floor, the steps in 
to be the first one in the world. We have two banks in the United States and the United Kingdom, so to be the third bank for this type of specific sector. Again, it is a kind of business and industry, not only for science. Um, finally, I'd like to acknowledge the contribution of my collaborator at USC and, um, and other collaborators at Harvard, Caltech, Boston, and uh, my funding source. Um, of course, I'd like to again to close my talk with this great lessons of Quran from Robert Moses, uh, 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 David, and Solomon. This two prophets, as you know, they're kings, and they have a lot of money, they are rich, they are, they are unique prophets in a way, so you don't suffer a lot like other prophets, but also you got science. And this is a value of science. And they say thank you from God for having science, not for being kings, not for being, having the power, not for having the money, but for having science. Because, um, and this is because it is science, it is science which gives us and our country the power, the dominancy, and the ways. Thank you so much.